an on-cloud running shoe that I like. Could it be the very first one? Find out today as we review the On Cloud Boom Echo 3. Yeah, that's it. It's a marathon racer. Come run with me. Change your mind, change your life. And welcome back to another edition of Running With James. Today, we're gonna give you our full review of the new On Cloud Boom Echo 3. That is a mouthful. Uh, this is a new marathon racer from On. But before we do that, if you would, just take a moment to like and subscribe to the channel. And then don't forget to hit that notification bell to know about all things Running With James. All right, guys, so as usual, we're gonna start with the upper. We'll work our way down to the midsole, then the outsole. We're even gonna get in today about what are some different types of things you may really enjoy this, this shoe for and what's something that maybe we, you wouldn't like it for, at least from our perspective. Um, and by the end of this video, you'll know whether we think this is something you just gotta have or something you should skip. So, like usual, we're gonna start with that upper of this shoe. Now, the OnCloud Boom has a microfiber upper. Um, now, this upper is very thin, like most racers are. Um, it has a pretty substantial heel counter, so you can see there's actually some pretty good uh, strength to that, whereas the rest of the shoe really has very little structure whatsoever. In fact, you can see right through that shoe. Now, with this heel counter, it doesn't have that kind of traditional uh, padding that, you use, that you're seeing nowadays in the racer where they kind of have like a little pad to lock your heel in, um, but I did find that I had zero problems as far as heel slippage whatsoever. Um, so the heel counter is substantial enough that it really gives you um, some good lockdown fit for that heel. Um, has a standard lacing system. Um, now I will say that the laces are a little bit different. Uh, they're very thin, uh, but it's kind of traditional with the on cloud uh, kind of way they do things with their laces. Now, I have never been a fan of OnCloud. I've always liked their uppers because they're very well made, they're very comfortable. Um, I really do like usually the fit of them, but for me it's always been like the midsole just never really worked out. But I really do like this upper. It's thin, it's comfortable, you've got plenty of room in the toe box, plenty of uh, height in the toe as well, um, and the lacing allows you to get a really good lockdown fit. Um, and because of the lightness of this upper, uh, you know, you guys hear me when I talk about shoe reviews, one of the things I always talk about is like water absorption, like how does a shoe like drain because I'm gross and I sweat all the time, right? This shoe actually is one of my uh, go-to shoes as far as the upper is for those really hot days because when I start sweating or when I'm pouring water over my head, this thing drains spectacularly well. So I've had zero issues with like that saturation point and squishing and stuff with this shoe and uh, I'll be honest with you, since I've been running this in the last few months, it's been the hottest part of the summer. Um, and so it's really drained very, very well. Um, and that adds up, especially with the weight as the race goes on. You don't have to worry about hot spots. So I haven't had any hot spots whatsoever. Um, and I dig the color even, right? I'm not usually a white guy. I like black or bright colors, um, but this white, just the combination of the green and the black, I think it, it pops, it pops. You know what I'm talking about? It pops, so this is so good. So, but I really dig it. Um, so for us, the upper is a win. It's a thumbs up, so great job on. All right, now, the midsole. Now, the midsole is usually where the magic happens or does not happen in a shoe. Now, for me, On has always been one of those things that, you know, it's a very unique type of shoe um, where they have these kind of like little, I guess they're the clouds. Um, they're these little, you know, pockets they put in their shoe. So it's very, it looks cool, looks neat. Um, but for me, it's always been too stiff. It's always been too hard. And I've never felt like it was a shoe I enjoyed running in. That has changed with this shoe. Um, they're using a P-Bax foam, they're calling it their Helion HF foam, uh, with uh, 39, uh, I think it's 39, it's a 38 millimeter stack height in the heel, uh, and 27 stack height in the forefoot, I think it says 27, 27 and a half. So it's giving it about a nine millimeter drop, which is a little, little higher than what I usually like, um, but I'm gonna be honest with you, I like, I like the drop, I like the foam, um, and then they have their carbon speed board in here as well. And that carbon speed board is just meant to give you a little bit more rigidity and spring you forward, right? So you can see with the stiffness of that shoe, so when you put that force on there, you really feel that pop kind of being creative. Um, so 
The foam on this, it's a P-Bax foam, um, which is one of my favorite foams. So that means it's bouncy. Um, it means it's, it's, it's soft. It, it, it really propels you forward. Now, for easy runs, slow paced runs, it's okay. Um, I would not do a long run in this shoe, um, but when you want to pick up the pace, when you really want to start pushing it, like I love it on the track day for speed days, this is the this 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 is a great foam for that. It's it's responsive, um, and because of that extra stack, right? So, uh, kind of a comparative shoe to this is the Takumi Sen 9, um, or even the Puma Deviate Elite that we just reviewed a few weeks ago. I think I kind of put those in the same category in kind of where the stack is, but then also where the uh, the, the kind of not necessarily the weight of the shoe, but how fast you want to go. So, definitely picking up the paces is the shoe for me. Now. Uh, I will say that with the stack height of the shoe, I probably would not want to wear this for like say a marathon. Um, for me, this would probably be more like half marathon, 10K, 5K for sure. Um, and then even when we get into it a little bit later in the video, for hybrid racing. Uh, so that's like high rocks, deca fit, stuff like that. So uh, it's a great shoe. I love the foam. They did a great job on this foam. So they're going in the right direction. If they keep this up, I'm gonna be an all cloud fan. All right, now for the outsole. Now the outsole is their unique rubber uh, outsole. It's there's not like a it's not like some kind of collaboration with some company or anything. This is their proprietary outsole. Um, it's pretty grippy. Um, I've ran it on the track. I've ran it in, in some kind of gravelly material uh, like. Uh, tracks, what have you, uh, definitely down on asphalt and concrete, um, and it's comfortable. It, it works, it, it gets you through the corners. Um, the big thing for me is why I actually got this shoe originally was because I was testing out a new racing shoe for High Rocks, um, and so High Rocks is a functional fitness competition, um, and so I've been looking for some different ones. I've always liked the Takumi Sen, I like the Adios Pro 3. Um, I've even tried the Nike Vaporfly in it, but the grip just wasn't there. So that's one of the things you kind of have to look for when you're doing stuff like High Rocks. So I wanted to try this shoe out because it intrigued me. Um, and I will tell you the grip is magnifique. It's really good. Um, so pushing a sled, pulling a sled, uh, sometimes in the, uh, some of the arenas that we use, um, they're, you know, they have concrete and sometimes you know, the concrete can get dusty. So it gets like this film. And when you're trying to sh turn these sharp corners, you feel like you're gonna slip, right? So I kind of had that issue with uh, the Adios Pro 3 the la in my last race here in Houston. Um, and so this one, no way. This is like, you feel connected to the ground, great grip, really no matter what the situation is. Um, they obviously have strategically placed rubber and that's mainly just to, you know, give you good coverage, but then also to protect that foam because since it is that P-Bax foam, it's a little, little more brittle. Now, I will say though, that I have noticed a little bit of uh, kind of fraying and stuff on the edges of the shoe, right? So for me, you know, I, you know, kind of pronate and I'm a kind of a midfoot striker, what have you. So I'm seeing right here on the edges where it's that foam starting to come apart. Um, so that's really the only wear I've seen. I have about 75 miles in this shoe and probably 70 of those miles is all fast miles, right? So, you know, you're taking sharp corners, you're, like I said, pushing the sled on the carpet, stuff like that. So, um, so we'll see the, 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 the verdict still out on how long the shoe's gonna last, but it's still got great pop, it's still fitting really well. So they did a good job on that outsole. All right, so what's the verdict? Well, obviously we like the shoe, it's comfortable, no hot spots, it's bouncy, you feel fast. Uh, now it does come in at about seven and a half ounces for a men's size nine. So in that category of like a 5K, 10K, you know, even stretching to a half marathon shoe, it might be a little heavier than what like maybe I would want. Um, I think the Takumi, the Takumi Sen 9 comes in, in my size 10 and a half, comes into closer like under seven ounces. I think it's like six point something. Uh, now it's a little lighter than the, uh, the Puma Diviate uh, Elite. Um, so I think for my size 10, it was almost eight ounces. Um, which is, you know, it's not heavy at all. You know, it's still light. You would want it a little lighter, but with the extra foam, so it's definitely got a higher stack than uh, both of the the Puma and the Adios uh, uh, Takumi Sen. Um, so, you know, my legs don't feel as beat up and I still feel like I can go fast. So you don't feel that extra, you know, 0.5 ounces, whatever it is, right? Um, so for us, I think this is a great shoe. I like running in it. It's one of my favorite shoes on speed day for sure. Um, and I am pretty sure, I am like 95% sure that for my next High Rocks race in November, this is gonna be my race day shoe. So that says a lot because that's a pretty long race um, with some high intensity efforts. So you want some stability, you want some traction, you want to feel fast. Um, and then you also want something that's not gonna beat your legs up. And I think this checks all of those boxes. So for us, the On Cloud Boom Echo 3 is a must have. 
All right, guys, thanks for coming in. I again want to say thank you for joining us. And if you haven't done so, share the video. It's a little thing for you, but it's a big thing for us. Really helps with the algorithm, YouTube, all that great stuff. Um, if you haven't done so either, we also have a podcast that drops every single Wednesday. We talk about training techniques. We have uh, some awesome guests. Um, our guest this week uh, is going to be internet are they internet sensations or the Instagram sensations? Whatever they are, they're awesome people. They're friends of ours. They're ninjas. Um, and they come to the gym every now and again. Um, but Big Mona and his wife are going to be here, and we are going to be having a great time talking about fitness and family and all that wonderful stuff. So check those episodes out every single Wednesday. Um, and then if you haven't done so, make sure, make sure you also check out our website, mybcfit.com. We are not just shoe reviewers. We are also coaches. We help you learn how to run. We help you learn how to get fit and have a good time doing it. So you can check out mybcfit.com for all that information. Join us for classes where you want to come check us out on races. Um, or if you just want to learn more about how to get fit, it and how to enjoy it. So guys, thank you for coming in. Remember, when you change your mind, you can change your life.